Reliance Nifty 500 Index Fund. Will investing in this fund help in your wealth accumulation process in the long term or not? Let us find out through an in-depth analysis in this video. Hi, welcome to HolisticInvestment.in. We help individual investors like you to make the right financial and investment decisions to reach your financial goals in a more smarter and faster way. So before analyzing this fund, let us first understand what is Axis Nifty 500 index fund and what does the index mean. So as this is an NFO, it starts on 26 June 2024 and it ends on 9th July 2024. And some of its key features are, it's an open-ended fund type and it has Nifty 500 TRI as its benchmark. And it belongs to the category of equity flexicap and the fund managers of the Axis Nifty 500 index fund are Mr. Karthik Kumar and Mr. Sachin Raleka. The minimum application amount you need to start investing in this fund is just 100 rupees. And the risk meter in this fund involved is very high. So the primary objective of this fund is to provide returns that before expenses closely respond to the total returns of the securities as represented by the underlying index subject to tracking error. So this is the investment objective of the Axis Nifty 500 index fund. But what does the Nifty 500 index? So to get a few basic details about the Nifty 500 index, right? It means uh, the Nifty 500 index represents the top 500 companies selected based on full market capitalization from the eligible universe. And also the 500 index is computed using free float market capitalization method where the level of the index reflects the total free float market value of all the stocks in the index which is relative to the particular base period. Also Nifty 500 index can be used for a variety of purposes such as benchmarking fund portfolios, launching of index funds, ETFs and other structured products. Now let's take a look at the top 10 holdings under Nifty 500 index. So the top 10 holdings are HDFC Bank Limited, Reliance Industries Limited, ICICI Bank Limited, Infosys Limited, Larson & Tubro Limited, ITC Limited, Tata Consultancy Services Limited, Bharti Airtel Limited, Axis Bank Limited and State Bank of India. The highest weightage is given to HDFC Bank Limited which is 6.78% and the lowest weightage is given to State Bank of India which is 1.88% and the sector which are represented under the Nifty 500 index fund are financial services sector, oil, gas and consumable fuels, information technology, automobile and auto components, fast moving consumer goods, capital goods, healthcare, power, metals and mining, construction, consumer durables, consumer services, telecommunication, chemicals, construction materials, services, reality, textiles, media entertainment and publication, diversified and forest materials. And the highest weightage is given to financial services which is 28.79 percentage and the lowest weightage is given to forest materials and the weightage is 0.08 percent. So these are the sectors represented, uh, represented under the Nifty 500 index fund. And if you look at the graph here, and see these are the this graph represents the returns which is as on 31st may 2024 so you can see that the total return it has given in a yearly returns is 9.04 percent and in one year it has given a return of 35.17 percent return and in five years it has given 17.85 percent return and since inception of this index it has provided with 12.63 percent return so now we have basic understanding of how the Nifty 500 index works and how much return it has performed. So let us analyze whether investing in the Axis Nifty 500 index fund will work be suitable for us or not by analyzing the pros and cons of investing in Axis Nifty 500 index fund. So the pros of investing in this fund is it invests in a diversified portfolio which are likely to deliver you with long term growth with minimal volatility as we can see in the graph. And it also invests in various sectors and across capitalizations. And also compared to an actively managed fund, the returns from this fund are relatively stable with less volatility because this is a passively managed fund. So this might be suitable for an ultra conservative investor who are looking to add passive investments to the core equity investment portfolio. And as a passive managed fund, it is as an index fund, it is also free from fund manager bias. And as it is managed passively, 
it is expected to have lower expense ratio than an actively managed mutual fund scheme so these are some of the advantages you get by investing in the axis nifty 500 index fund now let's take a look at the cons of investing in this fund what are the disadvantages the disadvantages are equally important to be understood because it reveals the potential risk you might be undertaking by investing in this fund so as this fund predominantly invests in equities it might not be suitable for short term investment so if you are an investor who looking to invest in this fund to achieve your short term goals then this might not be suitable for you because equity especially in market it is definitely unpredictable so you do not know how it will perform because in a short term period the market will be highly unstable where it might go from high to low very quickly and in very unpredictable manner it might go through a period of no return low return even in a period of negative return so we do not know how it will perform for certain so if you want to invest here just to achieve your short term goals this might not be a suitable fund also as an index fund this may underperform its index due to certain factors just because it is an index fund doesn't mean that it will perfectly track the index it can also underperform due to certain factors and this fund will not be able to deliver market beating returns as this is an index fund it will definitely try to replicate the index so the best it can do is match the returns the index is giving it cannot beat the index so that's not possible in an in an index fund also it cannot change its allocation dynamically based on the market outlook like an actively managed fund because when an, in an actively managed fund the fund manager will play to the market's advantage here if the market is performing well or uh, in a certain se- sector or in certain capitalization it will not change its allocation dynamically because of the market outlook it will only try to replicate wh- how the ma- index is performing also as an index fund it will only try to re- see how the index or how it performs well in a overall gen- general view it will not uh, do an analysis on the underlying stocks or check the soundness of the company in which they are going to invest which an active fund will in comparison will do they will take calculated risk by analyzing all stocks and choosing the best here they are not do- going to do any uh, individual analysis of the underlying stocks but just the overall view of the index so they are only going to consider calculating how the um, index will perform in a general view not how, uh, the stocks in under in the underlying index will perform also the major drawback of an index in fund investment is tracking error since it may not perfectly track its index as i have already mentioned and also as an index fund it is not flexible which means it will not be able to take any course corrective measures during the market crash which is also an inconvenient for many investors so these are some of the potential risk you might be taking by investing in an index fund like axis nifty 500 index fund so make sure to consider all these factors before choosing to invest in this what is the final takeaway should we invest in axis nifty 500 index fund or not it might be suitable for a ultra conservative investor who is not willing to invest in an actively managed fund but even then if you compare with, uh, this fund with other similar index funds in the market which have lower expense ratio and a lower tracking error that can actually be more useful in getting you the returns you dream of compared to an nfo like this which is just going to perform like axis nifty 500 index fund because here you also have similar index fund that have a lower expense ratio and a lower tracking error compared to this which you might consider investing in and also if you are willing to take risk then you can invest in actively managed funds that have the potential to deliver higher returns than an index fund like this so also as an investor if you are expecting dynamic fund management and looking for investments that can beat the market you should avoid this fund because as i have already previously mentioned this fund is an index the best it can do is it can replicate the index uh, the returns the index gives but not beat the index itself so if you want an investment that can beat the market this is definitely not it and also if you're expecting dynamic fund management the an index fund like this will not be able to do so and also at the end of the day what you should invest in comes down to what kind of investor you are what kind of investment objective you have and what kind of risk profile uh, you have what kind of risk you're willing to tolerate and how much asset you're willing to allocate to this fund so it's based on all of that 
so if you're having doubts regarding which investment option or if this fund will be suitable for you or not in the long run it's definitely it will be helpful for you if you consult with a professional financial planner because they will be able to look at all angles for you and personalize and craft investment options and investment strategies especially for you which will make your investment journey hassle free and smooth for you which also you can consider in the long term because this will definitely be a wise move for you also if you want to gain more investment and financial insights through the leading experts in the finance industry we also conduct a regularly free live webinars through which you can register and gain these insights the link is in the description also uh, if you like this video definitely hit like and subscribe to youtube channel so we can come up with more such financially beneficial content for you thank you for watching